Long before the dawn of the Buddhist era, the Bon cult was widely practiced in Mughal. A blend of animist beliefs, purification and exorcism rituals, and the worship of spirits and natural forces, aiming at a true knowledge of man's nature and dignity. The Bon cult was the predecessor of Buddhism. Although the first manuscripts date back from the 10th century, the origins of Bon are much older, related to the shamanism practices of the inhabitants of Central Asia in prehistory. All these popular beliefs are still identifiable and mark somehow the daily life in remote Himalayan regions like Mughal. The Tibetan Tantric Buddhism has assimilated most of these ceremonies, where the instrumental music and the voice gain special prominence on the path to enlightenment. Mugu is rich in Bon tradition, a pre-Buddhist religion, which makes it very interesting. There is an even more ancient pre-Buddhist religion, the cult of the natural divinities. The holy mountains and stones form the Neolithic cult, present all along the Himalayas and most probably also in Mugu, which was pre-Bon and pre-Buddhist. There are several theses, but all of them uncertain. We know that every peak, every river, every stone is associated to a deity. These gods come in pairs, two lakes associated with two peaks, two springs. This is the more archaic form of religion like the Druids in Galicia in northwestern Spain. Tibetan language, with all its dialects, is the best instrument to preserve the Tibetan cultural identity. It is spoken in a vast territory with an average elevation of more than 2,000 meters. Tibet is waiting for a political solution to become a united Tibetan nation. Its territory is currently fragmented into several countries. Ladakh in India, Baltistan in Pakistan, and the rest under Chinese control. I do believe that Tibet will finally achieve independence one day because the strong cultural ties foster a feeling of Tibetan identity, completely different from Chinese, Indian, or Muslim people. <laughs>